Let's start this way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts. Lord, we submit ourselves unto you, unto your spirit, Father God. Lord, we ask your spirit to lead us and guide us. Show us your way as always, Father. Lord, help us to put ourselves aside and to allow that spirit man to rise up inside of us that those around us might see Christ. For Lord, that's what it is. We can deposit your word. We can be filled with your spirit. But if we don't walk it out, if we don't let that world see that light, those things that you've put inside of us, what have we accomplished? Lord, help us. Help us to grow further. Help us to be more like Christ. Show us you. Show us you, Father. Lord, we're here today to worship you, to lift you on high, to honor and praise you, Father God, for this is your day. This is your day, Father. It's a day of rest, but it's a day to honor you, Father God. So we dedicate today to honoring you, Father. We love you. We praise you. We glorify you for everything that you will accomplish today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody ready to worship him? Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. All right. Two quick announcements. There will be a meeting for the Israel trip in Classroom 1 following service today. To give you information about it, see Chet. The second thing is, everybody like the air conditioning in here today? Kind of nice. Okay, but does everybody know that we need to replace some units? <laughs> and if anybody knows them, especially for bigger commercial buildings, they're not cheap. All right? We have to do two, have to do two. We have a matching funds to do the third one for up to $3,000. If you would like to donate to that to help do the third one, just mark on the envelope for matching for the air conditioning. If you have questions on that, you can see Tom and Lily and Mundo. Okay? Everybody understand that? We want to stay cool. It's going to be hot. We're in summer, and then in the winter when it's nice and cold out, it'd be nice to stay warm, too. Amen? All right. Mandy. Good morning, Brookside. Got uh, three announcements here, so I'll try to be brief. Um, first one is with Kids Church. It's a bit of a housekeeping issue that I would just like to bring to your attention. Um, we've, I've been finding all kinds of items every week just appearing in the classrooms, and most of the time they're not classroom appropriate. I appreciate your gesture in donating items, but I would ask if you have items that you wish to, for us to consider using in the classrooms or you think would be great, please just bring it to the office, drop it off in a bag, let Lillian know, she'll mark it for me. It'll be anonymous, um, because I find a lot of things that just are not working and they're not for the age groups and it's um, sometimes pretty concerning so I'd like to just share with you and just ask you to please stop stop leaving things in there because I found things from superhero coloring books which are great for home um, rock music CDs in the preschool room videos in the nursery that are not nursery appropriate dog toys in the preschool room they even had the tag so I know they were dog toys um, and a fire extinguisher this week happened to show up on my desk so Thanks, guys. Thank you. Just drop it off at the office, because most of the stuff either gets pitched or I donate it to the community bin at the end of the driveway. So if you just help me out with that, I would greatly appreciate it. Second, I need help. I need help. I need help. I need help. Two areas. I need help in the kids' classrooms. I am still down four teachers, which if you think about it, a typical month has about four weeks. That's an entire class that's pretty much not staffed. And the staff that I have, they're amazing but they're spread thin, and I need more help. So if you'll rise up with us, we would greatly appreciate that. And I need classroom assistance. Right now, I have two. I have two classes for sure that need an assistant each week. You're not teaching the lesson. You're just there to help the teacher in any manner, maybe get the 
um, help with the lesson, help with the craft, help with the snack. You're not teaching, you're just assisting. So right now I have two assistants. That's not going far, guys. And as you know, last week we had to close down the nursery, and that was not a decision I really took lightly. But if we don't have the coverage and we don't have the assistance, I don't have a choice but to close down the classroom. So if you guys would please partner up with us, we're asking for a six-month commitment. We'll revisit, see how you feel about it. You know, if you want to keep on, oh, I would love that. You know, and if you feel it's not for you, we'll find another area in the church that you can serve that may be more suitable to you. But guys, I really, I need you to step up with us and, um, and help us with the kids' church. How many agree, you know, the children are important in this church? What? Thank you. Let's rise up. Show me. Show the kids how important they are by just volunteering one Sunday a month. And you know what? You're not even going to miss the service, quite honestly, because you can catch it on YouTube and you can catch it on Facebook. So you're not missing anything. You're gaining a great way to speak into the lives of these children that greatly need this. So I thank you for that. And third, Vacation Bible School is just around the corner, July 16th through 20th. So I'm going to speak on that in a second. I want to show you a quick clip on how awesome this is going to be. Shipwrecked, rescued by Jesus. Does that not seem like it's going to be fun? We are going to do um, VBS this year from 6 o'clock to 8.30. Again, July 16th through 20th. We are doing it longer. Um, normally it's an hour and a half, but this year, guys, as you can see, that is a heck of a lot of fun. And the messages this year, these kids need, and I'm not willing to cut any of it out because they need every bit of this, and it is powerful. It is powerful. Our um, themes this week, that week, we're going to be... Um, how Jesus can rescue you. When you're lonely, Jesus rescues. When you're worried, Jesus rescues. When you struggle, get the theme? Help me out. Jesus rescues. When you do wrong, when you're powerless. Every night, we are going to head, you know, we're going to spearhead. Those are the themes every night. These are topics. These are things these kids need, not just now, but the rest of their lives. And we're going to spend a week focused on each one of those. And I need some help from you guys to let this happen. The music is going to be phenomenal. And it's even songs that you're hearing today, but we're just going to impress these points even further into the kids. So I have um, in the foyer right after this service, uh, we're going to have a table for VBS as well as just Kids Church in general with a whole bunch of sign-up sheets because this doesn't happen just by me alone. This is, the, this is a family group effort, and we're a family, guys. So I am reaching out and letting you know what we need. Uh, we're going to have a light meal. Since we're starting at 6 o'clock, I keep hearing people say, I can't get home from work and throw some food down us and get there. We're going to take care of that. We're going to open the doors at 5.30. We're going we to have a light meal. I've spoken to another church that does this, and it goes over so well. So you know what? We're going to feed you. So at 5.30, one day we'll have cold cuts, we'll have pizza, we'll have hot dogs, we'll have chicken nuggets. They're just light foods, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and we're going to need help at 4.30 each day for people to come in here and prepare this so that it's ready, so that we can feed these tummies and feed these hearts. We're going to need people to... Um, crew leaders. I need crew leaders, guys. So you will be in charge of five kids, groups of five. I need a bunch of you. Step up. 
It'll be a lot of fun. You're not teaching. I know a lot of you think, I'm not a teacher. I hear it all the time. Great. You don't have to be. You just have to have a little bit of patience, which I get it. That's hard some days. I got a four-year-old, folks. I get that. But they're going to bless you. They're going to bless you. Uh, we have a list for supplies that we will need, both the food list and um, otherwise out there. Helpers for the crew leaders. Uh, monetary donations are always accepted. Uh, there is a skit, if anyone's interested in doing a little bit of skit work. Um, we do, will be needing someone to run projection on Friday night. I do know that there is nobody up there, and that part is really vital to the week. So that night is going to be just as important. If you are a carpenter, has some basic carpentry skills, you do not want me with a saw, so I am out of the picture on that one. But, you know, some sawing, some drills, not hard. Some simple projects. We could definitely use your skills. Uh, ferns, palm tree type like plants, if you will loan those to us, we will make sure that you get them back. I will do my best to keep them alive. I'm pretty plant friendly. But um, we need a tropical look in here. So if you guys can help me out with that, even some fake arrangements would be fantastic. And if you want them back, that's fine. I will have a tag on things so we know who to give it back to. Or if you want to donate it, that's fine as well. Um, I think that pretty well wraps it up, guys. But again, we need your help, and this is going to be a phenomenal week. Step up. Help out for a week, even if it's just one night. Come out. Be a part of it. 8 o'clock, the doors you know, will be open up that you guys can come in here and participate for the last half an hour and get to see what the kids are experiencing. It's going to be fabulous. Thanks for your help. Oh, one more, sorry. One more, real quick. We're going to be, um, sorry, we're going to be working at the fundraiser through Operation Kid to Kid, which is partnering with World Vision, and this is to help Haitian families with drought-tolerant seeds, or what we are going to work towards. And these seeds are enough to grow food for the entire family with additional crops to sell in their community market. $10 provides enough seeds to grow and feed a, feed a child for an entire year. So our goal this year is to, for $80. Of course, we always hope to exceed that. So we just want to let you know that we're working to help out the kids in Haiti this year for our fundraiser. Thank you all. Thank you, Mandy. Okay. Ready for the word? Amen. Let's rise. Let's stand. Good morning. Can we all smile? Pastor's thinking it's a rough crowd, so he sent me first. So, <laughs> he's smiling. Okay. Join me in Matthew. It's common. There it is. Matthew 6 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I really want to encourage you that have families, maybe they don't attend this church, but they have children, that you would speak to the parents and say, can I bring your children to BBS. They probably would be happy to release them for a while so they could just have a little time by themselves. But anyway, it's an opportunity to reach children. That's what we want to do. Can you say amen? And so how many are going to be in prayer for that endeavor? You're going to lift it up and just believe God in a mighty and powerful way? Amen. I want to call your attention to the fact that this Wednesday evening we'll not be having a service. It's the 4th of July, so there'll be no service. Now, with that thought in mind about the 4th of July, last night over at my house, I'm about two blocks from the golf course there, the Susquehanna Valley Golf Course. They have an annual time in which they have fireworks display. And all of a sudden, I heard this banging and everything else, and I looked out, and boy. You know, when I thought about that, I realized that so often what we do is we enjoy fireworks, but we forget why we celebrate the 4th of July. And we celebrate it because we were set free from the tyranny of England, okay? 
If we have anybody from England today, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean anything about that, but nonetheless. And you know, it took a great sacrifice for that to happen, would you agree? And so I encourage you on the 4th of July to celebrate it and, and remember the cost of our freedom, the cost of our freedom. Will you do that? This morning, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion, and I believe when we come to the table of the Lord, we should celebrate the cost of our freedom. Can you say amen? You know, when we take the, take the bread, we need to thank him and realize that even though it is bread, it can be a time to release our faith for the healing of our bodies. In other words, if we're not careful, we could celebrate Holy Communion like we celebrate the 4th of July too often where we forget the costs of our freedom. Jesus bore the stripes in order that we could be healed. And I believe that when you take that bread in your mouth and begin to chew it and swallow it, and it'll, it'll go to our parts of our body, I want you to know we can release our faith at that moment to be healed. Can you say amen? And then think about the cup when we partake of it. Oh, praise God. Just like blood was shed for our freedom here in the United States, and we know that down through uh, the years, more and more people have shed their blood in order to maintain that freedom. I'm here to tell you, it's because of the precious blood of Jesus today that you're free and I am free. And the power of that blood, I want you to know, it's greater than any power you could ever want. That precious blood. When I think about when Jesus told Mary, don't touch me right now. He was going to send to the Father. I believe he took his blood. He took it to the Holy of Holies in heaven. And I believe there was a tremendous celebration. Amen? Wednesday people will be celebrating the 4th of July. I hope for the right reasons. Amen? But just think about all the angels as they celebrated around the throne when Jesus entered there with his precious blood that set you free and me free and it speaks, hallelujah, deliverance to people. In the precious blood, when we take the cup, if we need a fresh cleansing, we need to remind ourselves of it. Amen. We need to release our faith at that moment that we are being cleansed by his precious blood. And at the same time, it's a weapon. It's a protection. I'm going to ask you to do something right now. Will you just say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself. I plead the blood of Jesus over this service. I plead the blood of Jesus over this church. I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? One more thing. When you take the cup, you that are still guilty over some things that you haven't forgiven yourself about, will you release it? Will you just believe that the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin? Can you say amen? and not be under condemnation anymore. Ushers, would you come, or the servers, would they come, please? We're gonna celebrate Holy Communion. And the word celebrate is a key here. It really, really is. I'm gonna celebrate it. I'm gonna release my faith for healing this morning. There's, I, I have areas where I need physical healing, but he can heal you emotionally too. Amen. But I'm going to release faith today to be cleansed afresh and anew. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Will you stand and come down the middle aisle and egress down the side aisles? You're welcome to come around the altar, up on the platform, or whatever. We ask that you get in family units. If you notice somebody that is here without a family, invite them into your group, okay? In Jesus' name. Father, pour out upon us today as we partake. May there be healings. May there be cleansing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. We're off to a good start. We're going to welcome the Spirit of God here in a mighty and powerful way. Get ready, get ready, get ready. God's going to do something in your heart and life. If you haven't had it happen already, it will happen before you leave. You can take that to the bank, by the way. Amen. Together now. Dear Spirit of God, here I am. I need you. Touch my life. Give me revival. In Jesus' name, we welcome you. We welcome you. Heal. Deliver. Save. Restore. In Jesus' name. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. burdens at your feet I'm letting go of all the things I can't control in my frailty Lord I find your strength and I'm depending on a love that I won't let go so I trust you yes I trust you oh, I trust burdens at your feet and I'm in go of all the things I can't control in my frailty Lord I find your strength and I'm depending on a love that I won't let go so I trust you yes I trust you oh I trust you Yes, I trust you. Oh, I trust you. God, I trust in you. Oh, you are my peace. I don't have to be strong, cause you are my strength. Trust 
thank you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you, Jesus. We love you. We love you, Lord. We magnify you. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we magnify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so awesome. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for his presence. Can you say amen? I, I think you got another praise in you. Will you lift your voice? We praise you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If our ushers would come, please. Praise God. Here are some prayer concerns for you to consider this morning. Uh, Dave Heimbach, and we would pray that his uh, foot would uh, receive healing. There's a blood clot concern there, and he's taking medicine for that. Let's ask God to heal Dave today. Can you say amen? Pray for Andrea, too, that the Lord would heal her in a special way, that he would touch her by his divine presence and power. Continue to pray for Linda Dries Hunt. As I told you last week, she's home. Let's lift her up for complete healing from that infection and pray for her husband Ed that he would be touched mightily by your presence. Also, a, a family will need a new place in the near future to reside. And uh, they have certain needs because of the people in the home. So we need to pray that God will just open the door for them. Can you say amen? You heard Mandy today about VBS. Before we get to that, we need to continue to believe for complete healing for her shoulder. Uh, she's come a long ways, and we're just believing God for that. But VBS, we want to see children set free. We want to see them touched by the power of God. You see, I, I believe in salvation for children. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit for children. I believe even the gifts can operate through children. I, we got to really pray. Amen. Amen. Also, pray for prison ministry in general in this area. Pray for Stan and where he uh, certainly uh, is used of the Lord in a special way in the Cole Township prison there, that God would just strengthen him with might. We were there as a group. He, uh, Stan had us come in. A lot happened. A lot happened in the lives of people. Uh, let's just pray that God will just reinforce that and lift it back up. And hopefully in the near future we can go back. Can you say amen? The Vreelands, we want to continue to pray for them as they, they're here today. But they go out in ministry during the summer. And we want to see God's blessing on them and protection uh, as he races. And he does it for the glory of Jesus. But as they minister to people in services in teaching times, you let's pray God will continue to use them. The sign out there, I wish I could say something about that. I keep praying. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Keep believing. Amen. Then we want to pray for the Ebees today. Uh, 
this morning was their last service for the early service and um, I know that I told you we're going to take up an offering today but um, they don't want that offering so if you came to give I'm sorry I couldn't tell you ahead of time but anyway um, uh, also we wanted to have a meal but they're not really open to that so just bless them they're, they're going out they believe God has let them out they're like Abraham of old, so we want to lift them up in prayer and ask God's blessing upon them in a special way. Can you say amen? amen. All right. If you want to really get into agreement with us today, if you feel comfortable, will you just let your hand be pointed in this direction as we pray? And one of these men here, is this the man that's doing it? He's got his hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> We give thanks to you, O oh God, for your name is near, and we tell of your wonderful deeds. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your constant help from childhood to old age. And may our lives be a testimony of what you have done for us. And we come before you on this beautiful, glorious summer day, lifting up the tithes and offerings we are about to receive, asking you, Lord, to guide us as we follow your plan for our Christian lives, taking heed to all the needs all around us, knowing that we have a vital part in meeting those needs as we give unto you. For your word tells us to be rich in good works, ready to give, and willing to share. And may God's peace be in all of us who are in Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the saints say, Amen. Good job, Bernard. the Lord. I, I just was handed a prayer concern and it has to do f with Chris McCall. Uh, he's home recovering. He had what a, appears like a stroke on Friday so we want to lift him up in prayer. We need to pray for healing and strength. Amen. In the name of Jesus agree with me right now that you touch Chris oh Lord. Father, right now, we thank you, Lord, he's in the land of the living, and we just ask, Lord, that you heal him from the stroke. Father, that you give him healing and strength, that, Lord, that you protect him in every way. We plead Jesus' blood upon him even now in the name of Jesus. Bring him back into our assembly here as we worship in our congregation whole in the name of Jesus. And we agree together. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. I just learned of that, but anyway, praise God. This morning, um, we have a speaker that most of you know, and I'm so thankful for our brother. Richard Gunn, God has used this man in so many places and so many times as he's preached to people. By the way, he has a heart for you. He really, really does. So does Andrea. She has a heart for you. And today, I know he will come to this uh, pulpit here or however. Maybe he wants a speaker down here, do you? Uh, a lectern down there? Okay, and he's gonna share what God's put on his heart. Let's welcome him. Can you say amen? Good to be here this morning. Good to be saved by the grace of God. Good to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Good to know that all of God's gifts are available as God would see uh, 
our several ability to be able to perform them. I do have a beautiful wife with me here this morning. If Andre would stand up just for a minute. She really makes me look good. Um, amen. <clears throat> While she's standing, if everybody would stretch your hands toward her, she's having a big difficulty in sleeping at night with a couple of different things going on. If you would, just pray that God will give her a good night's sleep that she could get rest and, and, and she, her body would rest and her mind would rest. Our baby's home with us, Chelsea. She's doing great by the grace of God. So a lot of good things God's doing in her life, but that lady right there needs some rest. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now, God, that you'd move on Andrea, God, and touch her physical needs, God, that she may get a night of rest. And God, every night would be a night of rest. And God, just help her, God, just to be at peace with all things, God. And I pray, God, that you'd just speak that perfect peace, God, that perfect rest, God, that remaineth to the people of God, and the church said amen. Amen. If you would today, I'll be going to John chapter 10, verse 10, and I heard a minister many, many years ago say this, and it really stuck with me as the Spirit of the Lord uh, uh, spoke to my heart about it, uh, to a familiar verse, and I always want to call that out. When you know these verses in the Bible, and they're familiar to you, that, that, that just means we got a blessing, folks. We're blessed that some of these scriptures, if not a lot of them, are familiar to us. We are a privileged people, uh, amen, to be familiar in the Word of God. And God just keeps giving us revelation and illumination to His Word. God keeps growing all of us in the grace and knowledge of God. But in John chapter 10 and verse 10, if you'll just stand in reverence and respect to the infallible, inerrant Word of God, God, um, be preaching here and this oh, obeying the Lord and giving ourselves over to the Lord. But uh, John chapter ten verse ten, the Bible says, "The key, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly." And the church said. Amen. Would you stretch your hands this way and ask God to anoint me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, God, God, that you'd anoint me afresh today, God, anoint our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. God, anoint us today to deliver your word with power and demonstration, God. Take my tongue now, God, and use it as a pen of a ready writer. Speak to every heart, every mind, every soul here today, God. We pray, God, that you would encourage this people today with your word in Jesus' name. Again, church said amen. Amen. I ought to preach today on a very familiar topic that we hear almost every day. It's a fairly new term. Amen. That 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 uh, over the last election really came up. You know, and I'm not here to preach politics today. But you know, we hear almost every day about fake news. Amen. It's throughout the media, that word uh, fake news there, it goes on and on and on. If you listen uh, to one broadcast, they've got this version of, of something, and you flip it over to another broadcast, uh, and they got another version of it. But it, it, this word fake news, whether it's on one side of the politics or on the other side of the politics, amen, it's become very used term, amen, on this word fake fake news. Amen. And you know, church, there's a lot of fake noise going on in the world. And I read these two, this scripture here, and there's two big parts of this scripture. Amen. The one is what the devil's out to do. Amen. And he's not playing games at us. This is all wrote in red. And Jesus said, the thief cometh. He came to do three things, church. For us individually, spiritually, as a family, as a body of believers, he came to destroy us. He come, amen, he's not playing games at us. Amen, it, it ain't some of those little childish games that, that in the past that we may have got involved with. Amen, but the devil come to destroy our lives. He come, amen, to rip this church apart. He come to rip our families apart. He come to rip our jobs apart. He come to take our hearts and get them in 
such a condition that we can't receive the goodness of God. He come to get our minds so troubled that we can't process the word of God. But Jesus said, amen, he got good news. If you'll give me the next slide up there. So to go from fake news, I want to go to good news real quick. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, he, he gave us some good news. Amen. And in this good, word, good news, church, there's truth. Amen. The truth is the only thing that will set us free. Jesus used this word abundancy. Amen. He wants us to have an abundance of things in our life. He wants us to have plenty. That word would mean plenty. Jesus wants us to have plenty of peace. Jesus wants us to have plenty, amen, of every good thing that he's, amen, got spread out through heaven. He wants us to have that. He wants us to have the richness of the world. That's not all about money. It's not about finances, but he wants us to be rich in grace. Amen. What's grace? Unmerited favor with God. He wants us to be rich in the goodness of God. He wants us, amen, church, to have a lot of. That's probably the way I'd say it. Amen. He just wants us to have a lot of him and all the good things that he's got. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is so abundant that we have to press down. Amen. It's so full we have to press it down. Amen. Just like pressing something down in a cup. Amen. He wants us to, it to be running over. Amen. The goodness of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the healing of God, the deliverance of God. He wants us, church, to be a people that is literally running over and spilling out on other people. Amen. Wouldn't you like to be in a place with God that somebody would look at you and say, man, I like to have what he's got. I like to have what she's got. Well, church, that all comes from our mouth. Amen. Death or life, life in the power of the tongue. Amen. That's a warning for all of us. Amen. Ever how we speak that, we either speak in life or we're speaking death. I, I want to be a person, God help all of us, especially me, to always speak life to a situation. No matter how bad it is, no matter how, 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 how outrageous it is, we can speak life. Yeah, I see what the situation is, but I'm waiting on God to move. I, I see, amen, how the devil's come in on life, uh, that person like a flood or what he's doing, but I know a God that's bigger than that problem. I, I know a God that's bigger than that situation. I, you know, a few years ago, church, I, if I looked at the situation with my youngest daughter I, and you looked at what was going on in her life, you would never believe that she had been Central Pennsylvania today. I, amen. Sending her mom a gospel song last night. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen, and, and, and sending that to her sister. But God is a good God, church. Um, he's bigger than any problem, anything that's going on in our life. Um, he, it's so big, he, we got to shake it down sometimes um, for, because it's running over in our life. Um, amen, and we, we just want a lot of God. Um, there's a whole lot of God going around. How many of you today um, are so full of God that you can't get no more of him? How many of you all are so full of God today uh, that you can't get no more of him? Not me. Amen. There's plenty of room in me, amen, to get more of God. Um, well, church, the good news is um, God is standing at the brink of heaven. Um, ever what position God is, and he's just there, and he's ready, amen, to flood us um, with all the goodness of heaven, um, with all the power of heaven, um, with all the anointing of heaven, with all the healing of heaven. Um, amen. God is a big God today, church, uh, and he's got more than any of us could ever imagine. Give him a good hand clap of praise. This abundant life that Jesus talks about really, amen, all starts and stops with our spiritual condition. Our spiritual condition, amen, can stop the flow of heaven. Our spiritual condition, if I'm out sinning on Saturday night, if I'm out cursing throughout the week, if I'm talking like the devil, acting like the devil, and doing like the devil, I'm going to get in very bad spiritual condition. No matter if I got... No, no, be just like if I got it and got really sick and man, my body was so weak, I couldn't work, I, I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. That's what sin would do to the spiritual condition of our life. But, but praise the Lord, church, we've got an advocate with the Father. Jesus is seated in heaven at the right hand of God and he says, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden. He says, cast all your cares upon me for 
I care for you. He wants our spiritual condition, church, to be spotless of sin. Not a spot, not a wrinkle, not a blemish, not a, any such thing. How can I do that in myself? No, nothing. Not a good thing I can do. Pastor's already said it. We can plead the blood. Amen. When we sin and come short of the glory of God, and we all have and do and will, unfortunately, we've got Jesus. Amen's already paid the price. He's already shed the blood. So our spiritual condition today, church, can be perfect in God through and by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Give him another good hand clap. Our relationship with others, with our wives, with our husband, with our children, with our friend, with the church, with our jobs, throughout the neighborhood. God wants our conditioned church to be full of good news. Bad news, fake news is coming at us from every direction. Hey man, the devil is bombarding this world with fake news. And I'm going to get into fake news here real quickly. Hey man, fake news, hey amen, is completely opposite from good news. Hey amen, our job is to step back and grab a hold of little good news. Our job when we hear the lies of the devil, when we hear the devising and the cunning ways of the devil, our job is to step back and say, God, anoint my ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Not the person, but what the Spirit of God is telling me. Anoint my eyes to see God spiritually through this. He wants our condition, church, to be abundant. Amen with our relationship, our finances, our health, our hope, and our faith. He wants us to be filled, church, with the abundance of Him through and by His Son, Jesus. But here comes fake news. Next slide, please. Amen. What, what is this thing about fake news? Well, this is a little brassy, I know, but it's liars. And who's the father of every lie? Satan will take a speck of the truth, just a little bit of the truth, and he will add on to it, and that's what the world today is calling fake news. The thief, as I said already, he come to steal, kill, and to destroy. Anytime fake news is coming at you and the devil's behind that, you can say the devil's out to steal, he's out to the kill, or he's out to destroy. Church, the devil's not playing games. He'd like to kill me. He would like to destroy me. He would love to do everything he could do. He'd like to steal everything he could. But you know, church, as long as I'm in, amen, relationship with Jesus Christ, as long as I've got the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God abiding in me, and I'm doing the best I can do, amen, to live a good Christian life, he did say to be a light as a city is set on a hill that cannot be hid. As long as we're making effort, church, Jesus is going to be there to protect me from the thief. What is fake news? It's misinformation. It's information that's got a miss in it. Now, they don't, you can't do this anymore, Harley, but back, and I'm only 53. I said the other day I was 52, but I'm actually older than that. You know, it, you, you take years less when you're older, but you, when you're younger, you say you're older for some reason. But I'm 53 year old, and I used to work on cars a lot because I had to. But you know, I get a miss in them. If you had an eight-cylinder and one of those cylinders would drop, you had, you know, some of your power gone and you could hear that miss. But it's misinformation. It's information that's missing something. And that's what fake news does. It's a hoax. You've heard that word before. That's a big hoax. That's how serious this, this fake news is sometimes, church, that we will allow to have place in our life. We will allow to listen to that. There's a hoax about that. It's bogus. It's a sham. They say it down south a little bit more than I hear it up here. It's a sham. There's something about it. It's all twisted up. It's phony. That's fake news. And when you listen to, to, again, no matter what news agency you like to watch, and I do have a favorite one, and, it, and they're, they're my, by no means perfect themselves, but it, there's always something going on. Today in the world, we deal with the news media. We deal with the Internet. We deal with social media, Facebook, text, phone all the email, all the things that God has blessed us with to communicate. I got a text this morning from a gentleman in Stanton, Kentucky, Buford Maddenley. He said, you was on my heart. Know that I've been praying for you this morning. 
And I texted him back and I said, pray for me. I'm going to be preaching this morning, Lord willing. Holy Ghost goes some other way. I love it. But Lord willing. And he said, done. He said, done. And I knew Buford would get down on his knees in Stanton, Kentucky and be praying for me. That's what God wanted us to use the technology for, not to tell a tale, not to be a fake news carrier. Praise the Lord. Are you a fake news carrier or are you a good news carrier? That's the question we ought to ask ourselves. Amen? When de- I've never preached on this subject, and the best of my knowledge, I've never heard nobody preach a message about fake news. I wrestled with this a little bit. Then God spoke to me, Brother Johnny, and said, there's fake news carriers and there's good news carriers. And I said, Lord, I want to be a good news carrier. Amen? But church, we, we've got a world full of all this. The world is wired now for fake news. And if we're not careful, we will get caught up in that situation and not even meaning to. Praise the Lord. You know, the devil lies. All this fake news is all about lies. He'll tell you here, God don't care. God don't care about your situation. God, God, God's got too much going on to worry about what you got going on. There's, there's a world out there, and you're not important. Lie. God gave his only begotten son for you. God allows sinful man to crucify him, to murder him, to slay him on the cross for you and you only. Praise the Lord. Ain't God a big God? He'll tell you that God don't heal. Well, that went out with the apostles. Have you heard that doctrine? Like God's got a different uh, a stamp for that particular period of time than here. God has no respect for a person's church. What he did for Peter, what he done for Paul, what he did for the old patriarchs of old, what he did in the 60s, what he did in the 70s, what he did in the 80s, God has not changed, church. If there's anybody that's changed, it's you and I, praise the Lord. Why? We allow the lies and the deceiving things of the devil to influence our thoughts. He'll tell you God don't save anymore. I got an article the other day that said the rapture happened in 1988. And we're living after the rapture. And I said, <laughs> delete. I didn't. I, I was sitting there, I started to read that. and going, like, how, how big a nut this guy? Delete. I ain't got time to fool with it. Ain't that good for that delete button? Hey, man, God has blessed us with delete. You know, you can use that today. Delete. Hey, man. Delete. It works. It's gone. You got to be a pretty good computer wizard to go find it. They say, no, that's really deleted. And I say, I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. It's all right, my sin. You know, God don't put them in a bag somewhere, and as soon as I mess up again, he pulls it back out. He puts it in a sea of forgetfulness, never to be brought up again. Ain't God a good God today? That's the good news of Jesus Christ, church. God don't set free. He'll tell you, well, you've got this addiction. You've got this situation. You're always going to live with it. Lie. Church, God, when God does something, he does it right. When God frees us, it's that we're drawn away by our own lust, the Bible says. It ain't that God didn't do right for us. It didn't that God didn't completely set us free from that. It's us drawn away by our own desire for that. That's where we need to, a little lady used to go to church with me down in Abington every night at testimonial service where we wanted to have one or not, we did. And she'd always get up, and man, I love what Bonnie would say. She said, I thank God that I still have the desire. And I heard that about 50 times, and it sort of rubbed off on me. And I said, thank God for the desire, the desire to read the Word of God. The desire to pray till we get into the anointed realm of God. Amen. Desire to come to church. The desire to be a witness. The desire to be that light as a city on a hill. Amen. To do that. But the, the, the devil will lie to you and he'll say, God don't deliver. That God don't fill with the Holy Ghost. That went out with the apostles. Again, going back to the miracles of God. Church God is the same God as he always has been and he always will be. The thing I put in bone there... Don't allow, it all starts in our head sometimes. Don't allow the fake news to even get in our head. Just stop it. We can do that. We can turn the volume off. We may have to be compassionate. We may need to be nice to somebody. We may need a shoulder for them to cry on. You may listen to what they got. But we got to say, God, I'm not even going to allow that to get in my mind to mess my way of thinking up. Amen, God, I know who you are. 
And God, I know you still have all power in heaven and in earth. And yes, there is a real condition here with this person or this situation, but God, I'm not going to allow that to get in my head. And God, I sure ain't going to allow that to get in my heart. Why? Fake news is full of lies, church. If you would give me the next slide, please. So I'm going to go back to the good news. Are you a good news carrier? Or are you a fake news carrier? And this is just a little bit of Bible here. Started back in Genesis chapter 3. Almost at the very beginning of the Bible, the devil came and lied to Eve. He deceived her. He drawed her away. God had prepared a place and, uh, the, called paradise. God had gave them every single thing they want to do. But how did the serpent deceive Eve? How would we get deceived with fake news? Something sneaky. I, church, it's a checkpoint for us when somebody comes to me and says, Hey, Richard, come here a minute. Sneaky. That, that's a red flag that ought to go up. If you hear me saying something about the pastor, I shouldn't be ashamed of what I'm saying about Brother Jerry. If I'm down at Walmart, which I'm never there, by the way, or if I'm at Wise Markets, then I'm always there. It is a good place to buy your groceries. But if you catch me down in the aisle of the grocery store, and I'm down there talking about Jerry, I ought to want you to hear me talk about Jerry. And John even said, hey, pastor, I was over three aisles from Brother Richard, and he was talking about you. What's Jerry going to say? Uh-oh, what was he saying? Why? Because the world's full of fake news. And Johnny would say, Pastor, you would not believe how that man was lifting you up and saying how great a man you are. You know what I'd be doing? Telling the truth. And I wouldn't have to be sneaky about it. Anytime we have to sneak around with a conversation, church, we ought to ask ourselves, are we yielding ourselves to fake news or to a lie? What's the next thing there? Clever. The devil was clever about it. He wants to skillfully change the words around. He'll take the truth, and he'll m manipulate the truth here. He's clever about what he does. He's not a dummy, church. He's been around for a long time. He knows mankind better than we know ourselves. So anytime we've got to step back and we've got to, Brother Tom, be clever about how we say about it, probably ought to be a red flag. Mm, am I on the good news team or the fake news team? Am I telling the truth or am I telling a lie? Because you know, the church, the truth is real simple and real easy to understand. It's easy to repeat it. But he was, he was sneaky, he was clever, and he was cunning in how he deceived Eve. Scheme. You know, always got a scheme going on. Are we that way? Are you that way? Am I that way? If we always got something we're scheming up, amen, about something. Church, we don't have time for that. It's a good sign that we ought to check ourselves, amen, and then he calculated, and, he, and then he was just simply, he lied to Eve, amen. He spoke lies throughout the Bible to the children of God. You're not above that. Throughout the entire word of God. I could teach on this, this series for three months and never even touch the surface on how many times the devil came to mighty men of God, mighty powerful women of God, children of God, and deceived them. You know, I think about Elijah. He slayed 450 prophets of Baal one day, and the next day he was hiding in a cave somewhere, wanting to die, scared to death of what one woman sent a word to him that you're going to die. Church, he, he believed that lie. A powerful, mighty man of God, praying to God to send fire down from heaven, and God sent fire down from heaven. And here he is just at fake news, ran and hid in a cave somewhere. We're all, we're all acceptable to that church. We all are out there as a big old red bullet, bullseye on our, on our bodies for that. But throughout the, the week, he prays on the weak. He also prays on the strong. People that are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, he wants us to get distracted. He wants us to take this fake news story that's out there and get our mind on that story, get consumed with the drama, get consumed with the, the happenings of that, and get our mind off the prize of Jesus Christ. How many of you pray enough? Mm. Do you pray enough? Could you pray more? How many of you fast enough? I'm fasting away to nothing. <laughs> How many of you fast? How many of you fast enough? How many of us read and study the Word of God? As much as we ought to. We all, church, can grow in the grace and knowledge of God. We all can get a little closer to the Lord. Amen. Next slide. 
Here's some scripture, church. Second Timothy, if we're really out spreading the good news and we're reframing from being part of the fake news, the Bible tells us that all scripture is given by God. So if we want to go out and spread the word, we are to get in the word. And then allow the spirit of the Lord to take us places that we may have never been spiritually. Ain't it wonderful when you meet somebody somewhere and God impresses on you to tell them something? You ever had that experience? Man, that's awesome. Then they start crying. Because God has touched their heart, not you. You've yielded yourself to God and God has touched their heart. I was sitting at a desk a few years ago when a gentleman up up from Chicago, and I didn't know exactly, I knew something, but I didn't know exactly what it was, and I, and I was sitting there, and he's, he's not a believer like we are, but he's of faith, not common faith, but he thinks he's okay, maybe he is, that's between him and the Lord, but sitting across the desk from me, I said, Mark, I got a prayer cloth for you, you said, I don't believe in prayer cloths. Well, I do, I'm sorry. But I got a prayer cloth for you. The church prayed over a prayer cloth for you. And I said, it has something to do with your leg. He looks at me. And he said, this is weird stuff because I feel it. <laughs> and then he starts crying. He said, who told you? And I said, I don't know. Nothing except the Lord and placed on me to pray for your leg. And then he says, which one? <laughs> and I said, Hurry up, Holy Ghost, tell me which one. And I said, right. And he, and he starts really openly crying. He goes, Did you, so nobody's told you? I said, no. He said, well, I got cancer on my leg. And he said, there's a, and he told me this condition, and he took that prayer cloth. Today he's cancer-free, and God has really moved on him. <laughs> but my point is, church, we need to stay in the Word if we're going to spread the good news. Mark 15, uh, 1 and 15, and this is really key to our, to our life in God and being that good news carrier, is repent. When we mess up and sin and come short of the glory of God, in church, we got a flesh that's contrary to our spirit. It's going to rise up in all of us. Some of us may be different sinners than the other, but we all are going to think thoughts. We're all going to feel like that that. We should do this or not should do that. But the, the key to our victory is to repent, means, which means the turn. It's got to turn from that. Got to make a deliberate turn from that. If you feel like there's an error in your life, a sin in your life, a thing that the devil keeps tormenting you on, I'd even use the word haunting you. You, you can't be saved if, if, if this condition, if this situation is going on in your life. And he haunts you all the time. He'd love for us to get caught up in that. We was out evangelizing a whole lot, and some of the best uh, differences that men honor has ever had is on the way to church. <laughs> and we look at each other, I'm going, like, what are you doing? I, got, I just got to get in front of 300 people here in a minute. And, you know, but the devil loves doing that. And we finally, and we do most of the time now, we laugh about it now. And you know, I said, you know what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to get you and me messed up here before I go to church. And, you know, it ain't that she wouldn't forgive me because she's been married to me for 35 years and I wouldn't forgive her. But the devil likes to get in your mind and have a distraction and say, you can't get up there and preach to them people when you just had an argument with your wife. Well, I didn't smack her, and she didn't smack me. We didn't use any bad language. You know, we didn't do anything. She did feel like killing me maybe, but she didn't. But the devil get that in your mind and say, you can't be that preacher and be arguing with your wife. And he's sort of, I shouldn't be doing that. And that was early on in our life. Not saying we wouldn't going home today. I don't know. So we certainly are not perfect, praise the Lord. But my point, church, is repent and believe. Repent and believe that God has forgiven you. Repent and believe that you've been set free from that. that. That's how we can let God do his work in our own lives and the lives of the other. Romans says we're justified by his blood. No man can justify us. So if you're looking for somebody to justify you, if you're looking for somebody else to set you free, hope and pray they will, but the blood of Jesus is the only thing that justifies us or sets us free. And once you've tapped the bloodline, once you've got the blood flowing in your life, the spiritual blood of Jesus Christ, the devil can't touch you because we got the blood. 
If you plead the blood, I pleaded the blood on my family. I pleaded the blood on my wife. I pleaded the blood on myself daily. I pleaded the blood. I stood over there behind Gunner just a minute ago, and I said, Jesus, I plead your blood. I plead, and I believe God. There's not a spot, wrinkle, blemish, anything sin in my life because of the blood that you shed. I believe that, church, or I wouldn't be able to get up here and preach to you and hopefully help you with the anointing of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, follow peace with all men. That's the key to God's holiness. It's having peace with all men, even our adversary. The Bible says agree with your adversary quickly. You know, who, who wants to argue with somebody? Who, who, the adversarial spirit that people carry around with them, they're always wanting to fuss. They're always wanting to talk. They're always wanting to slander. They're always wanting to put down. You know, I just had this experience last week. I just listened and went on and said, you can keep it. <laughs> I don't remember what we said. I really don't. Why? I want peace with him. I also want peace in my own heart. But we need to follow peace with all men. That's to save people, to fill with the Holy Ghost people, that's the lost people. That's the people that need us really bad. We need to follow peace with all men. If we do in that church, we can be a good news carrier. In Galatians 5 and 22, a real good test for all of us is the fruits of the Spirit. And God's got a whole bucket full of fruits of the Spirit. And if we, if we know we're, we're carrying those fruits, because God's ways are far above ours, far away the way we think. Far above how we would, would think about it. We can live in a, a place, church, to where we can be that good news carrier. And the big question, I ask myself this. Fake news or the good news? The choice is ours. One of the old prophets said, choose this day whom you serve. For me and my household will serve the Lord. We literally, church, have a choice that we have to make throughout the day. Are we going to be a good news carrier or are we going to be a fake news carrier? Are we going to be part of the lies of the devil or are we going to be part of the truth of God? I choose, church, and want to help God, God help me stimulate my thoughts, God. Bring from my heart, God, when I see it and I hear it and I sense it, God, I'm leaving fake news alone. And I'm going to go for the truth. I understand you, brother. I understand, sister. I'm praying for you and move on. Or we can get caught up into the, you know, I, I deal with people every day. I work, I work people. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to sell products. If you've got the right product at the right time at the right price, it, you can sell products. <laughs> but that's the simple piece of it. It's getting the people to do all those things in the right order. Same way with the church of believers. We have a great pastor here, but we as the congregation, we as the body of believers, we all... No, the little toe is not less important than the eye, or the eye is not less important than the finger. We all have a place in the kingdom of God. And as Brookside Ministries, plural, are we part of the good news of Jesus Christ? Or are we part of the fake news machine that's churning? The devil loves it. He's got this world, church, turning fake news. And, and he's got every situation, every piece of technology that he's just got ramped up, and he's turning it, and he's turning it, and he's turning it. If everybody stand to your feet this morning, please. If you've been part of this fake news that's been affecting you individually, today God can turn that volume off. How many people in here, don't put your hand up unless, this, unless you really have. How many people in here have really physically been healed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the straps he bore? How many people have been healed? Many, many hands in here. We, we, how many people in here have been filled with the Spirit of God? How many people here have been saved by the grace of God? The church, that's the greatest miracle we could ever experience is the saving grace of God. All the other things. My younger brother took a 410 shotgun and put it under his chin and pulled the trigger. His eyes were shot out. I was an eyewitness of this, and I'm going to stand over here with my hand on the Bible. And I'm scared of God. The beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. But I stand behind this pulpit today with my hand on the Bible and say I saw this horrendous situation in my young brother in 1990. 
got involved with. A 410 shotgun, shot his tongue off, off, shot his eyes out of his head. He was blind. Roof of his mouth was completely shattered. He was paralyzed on one side of his body. They said he'd be a vegetable the rest of his life because his brain was full of buckshot. And they pushed him over to the side of the room and pulled a sheet over his head and said, let him die. And I think about God and I think about his son Jesus when I think about the scene. My daddy was six foot six in his peak period of his life. This big man walks in and there lays his son pushed over to the side of the room and he gets this noise from the doctors. The truth is they knew it. Dad been a man of God. Mom been a woman of God. Was in a little church with probably a hundred people went in and it was filled with the people and filled with the Spirit of God. And they went and took my mom and dad out of the church and told them, said, if you want to see your son alive, get to the hospital. He walks through the door not knowing what went on and sees his boy, his youngest boy, laying over to the side of the room with the sheet pulled over his head. And the doctors give him that news. And he said, what are you doing for my boy? And they told him, that we're going to fight for him. I want everything that possibly could be done to be done for him. And they load him up and flew him on med flight to a bigger hospital. Three days later, church, mama was, uh, and mama still is, she's just a believer in Jesus Christ and his miracle working power. She told us all that God told her that her son was going to see that her son was going to speak, that he was going to preach the word and carry the gospel. I wasn't saved at the time. And I thought mama sort of lost her mind. And she did. Holy Ghost got her mind and her mind was gone. Just a few days later, church, and I'm telling you the good news today. God put eyes back in his head. I, one of these days, I have to fly him up here. I'm going to bring him up here for a, for a witness. But he's got eyes in his head, and they don't know how they got back in there. He's got a tongue in his mouth. He can speak as eloquent or ineloquent as I do today. Some of you all talk different than me. I can't help that. But, but they were looking in his, in his mouth, and the doctor saw skin on the side of his tongue. And his tongue was gone now, shot off. And the doctor simply clipped both sides of that like skin under his tongue and his tongue rolled back out. You know, you know, but that skin there, maybe from a baby. I don't, we don't know. God did that. Who put those eyes back in his head? God done that. Buckshot started popping out of his face and he would reach and just pop it out. You know, you know how God got rid of all that? God moved inside his body and the buckshot started popping out little gross but like a pimple boop it come out gone buckshot he had a whole little little medicine bottle full of buckshot that had popped out of his head all over but I saw that church firsthand still took two years from that time for me to surrender to Jesus one night in a in a little country church and the preacher was preaching a fiery brimstone message a cry from hell and he preached hell so hot that night that everybody in there repented, including the pastor, and he'll tell you that. But that's what it took to break my heart open, even though I'd saw that miracle. So I want to be a good news carrier and, and remind you, church, God is still a God of miracles. God is still a God of grace. God is still a healing God. God is still a loving God. It won't be long, church. God is going to be a God of judgment. And when I get to heaven and the books are opened, I'd sure like for Jesus to look at me and, and say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. And he would look and see that I was a good news carrier. That I wasn't a fake news carrier or allowing the propaganda or the lies of the devil to be spun around in the world. Don't you believe for a second that God won't heal you today? 
your troubled mind, there's a peace that surpasses understanding. A worry that the devil's got conjured up in your head is a lie from the devil. Your son will never be saved. Your son will never be set free. Your daughter will never be saved. She'll never be set free. That mom, that dad, that loved one, that husband, that wife, ever who it may be. He may say, your marriage is over. Church, it ain't over till God says it's over. Good news is God can heal and will heal. God can deliver and he does deliver. God can restore and he does restore. If we believe the good news, amen. If you would, all close your eyes. Bow your heads just for a second. If you would, grab a hold of your neighbor's hand there just a minute. Let's all pray one for another. Book of Revelation said as John was on the Isle of Patmos, Jesus appeared to him and Jesus laid his right hand upon him. So pray for the person to your right. To your right. If you don't have a hold or hand, just put your just pray for that one to your right. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we want to be the good news barrier. And God, we want to be able to remind this people today, God, that you are a God that's still very much in control. That you can and will heal every infirmity, every need, God. Help us all, God, be the good news barrier or the good news deliverer. Help us reframe, God and be able to see the wiles of the devil and this world's full of fake news. Help us not be a participant of that, God. Father, I ask you to heal these bodies right now, God, that are in pain. Heal these bodies right now, God, that are in pain by the stripes that Jesus bore. I bind this pain in Jesus' name, God. Let the, let the pain be removed today, God. And God, I pray for these minds that may be troubled. These minds that God may be frustrated, God. I pray right now, God, that you would speak a peace that even they wouldn't understand. I pray for the spirit, God, that they can forget. I speak amnesia to some of these things, God, that the devil has spoke to this group of people, God. Forget it and it's done. Remove it and it's gone, God. And I pray, God, you'd flood this ministry, God, with your anointing, with your power, with your grace, with your mercy, God. For these musicians, God, Brother Johnny, and his group, God, each one of the ministries in his church, God, I pray for a renewed focus, God, on the good news of Jesus Christ. And every distraction, God, that may be distracting any of us, God, I pray, God, you just remove that distraction right now, Jesus. And I pray, God, before today's over with, Lord, as our brother and sister goes home, that you would be a witness that you spoke to them today and you've done a work for them, God. Jesus, as we call upon your mighty name, the name that's above every name, the name that the devils fear and tremble just at the mention of your name, Jesus, the only name given among men whereby we must be saved, the great I am, the beginning, the end, the author, and the finisher of our faith. Jesus, in your precious name I pray. Church said amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. You know, I had an unusual thing happen to me, and uh, my left ear started to itch, and I and then my right ear started itching. I went like that. And then the Lord just said to me, you know, we could have itching ears. We want to just hear something that makes us feel really good. And we did hear some good stuff. But we don't like to hear about an area of correction, which today was brought also. How many know that there was that area of correction that was brought too? And so 
Don't be someone with spiritual itching ears, but receive the truth and put it into action. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Now, if you need special prayer, if you'd like to come, we would pray over you. If God's dealing with your heart, just step out wherever you are, and we would do that. Praise God. Thank you, Richard. You did a great job. Amen. All right. Go with the determination that you are going to reject fake news. And you're going to be a carrier of the truth of good news in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Remember, Wednesday night, we do not have a service because it's the 4th of July and people are going to be here and there.